Now, what if I said to you that all three topics in today's aviation news recap are related to airlines growing their fleet with more aircraft? Well, you'd be in luck because that's exactly what the focus is in today's recap. From Korean Air eyeing a new aircraft, WestJet growing its fleet to a Saudi Arabian-based company also seeking new planes. Let's begin with WestJet, who have continued their plans to accelerate growth by announcing that they'll be boosting their fleet by adding a total of three Boeing 737 MAX jets. The three additional 737 MAXs will be delivered from BO aviation and should be integrated in 2024, so that means this year, once relevant leasing contracts can be completed. Once delivered, the 737 MAX jets will aid capacity growth across the network and should therefore benefit customers. At least this is what the airline hopes. WestJet has strong ambitions of growing its route portfolio, which I'll get into a little bit later in this segment, and generally they know that they need to cater to the increasing levels of demand they are seeing. Furthermore, the 737 MAX jet is going to offer the latest cabin experience, and we know high levels of efficiency, which should also have positive ramifications across the business as they continue transitioning towards those next generation aircraft. We've seen that especially with the 787 Dreamliner, and the 737 MAX continuing to join the fleet is that next important step. WestJet knows that its growth targets are pretty ambitious, but it's fully committed to achieving them. And increasing its fleet will help meet capacity requirements as soon as the 2024 into 2025 winter schedule, and then especially in 2025 when we have that summer schedule. This really shows you just how forward-thinking airlines have to be. Some of them are planning their aircraft orders, as you will see, for the 2030s. Yes, a lot can change between now and then, but it is essential to have these things locked down as soon as possible to ensure that not only you're meeting the demand expected, but to make sure that you also are not falling behind the competition. The Canadian aviation industry is one that is certainly hot. The growth plan that I speak of in relation to WestJet was unveiled two years ago and included the airline's view of maintaining its position as Canada's national leisure leader. Furthermore, the airline wanted to enhance coast-to-coast domestic connectivity and trans-border connections. And I've used the word ambitious several times, but it is true, and WestJet says that now in the two years since implementing this plan, it's seen the associated benefits. While seeming minimal, the addition of three 737 MAX jets will allow WestJet to not only launch new routes, but boost capacity to key markets this year that need it. That should have positive ramifications. BOC Aviation said they're thrilled to continue working with WestJet to enable cost-effective fleet expansion. It is a pair that are very familiar with each other, and deals such as these will only extend the relationship between the two. Over to Korean Air, who are reportedly considering purchasing additional 787 Dreamliners following new comments from its chairman and chief executive officer. Speaking with Bloomberg, the CEO detailed the airline's long-term plans, which include significant growth and obviously a focus on fleet renewal. As part of those plans, the company wants to purchase at least 30 more wide-body aircraft, with Boeing looking likely to land the contract with the 787, at least for the airline in this stage, touted as the favourite. The purchase of the Boeing 787 really does align with Korean Air's continued ambition of taking over Asiana Airlines. This is one of the largest mergers ongoing and is going to certainly shake up our industry once it is finalized. We still need approval from the US before the two airlines can really come together. And when they do, there will be tough decisions that need to be made regarding the fleet and almost every aspect of the businesses. Furthermore, we do know at least that the pair are going to streamline elements of the business. It is something that needs to happen to ensure that they can stay agile moving forward. That means the 787 purchase will be important in relation to the fleet. If all goes according to plan, Korean Air hopes to achieve full approval for the merger from the US government 
in October 2024, or at least by then, which is, again, the last approval it requires. Several changes have needed to be made following the EU's questioning of specific elements. Korean Air, therefore, has been forced to amend parts of the takeover so the merger can stay intact. We're notably focusing on the ability to offer freighter services to certain markets, and at the levels they would have ideally liked, they needed to scale back that, as there were some concerns over the impact competitors would feel. Korean Air can now at least safely say that they've fulfilled everything the EU requires, they're just awaiting on the US. The order for the Boeing 787s, which could be placed at the 2024 edition of the Farnborough Air Show, set to take place in July, actually comes only months after another wide-body order, which is maybe why in this segment you've been getting a little bit of deja vu. Into the end of March, at the beginning of April, Korean Air finalised a purchase of up to 33 A350s from Airbus and this included the A350-1000. The purchase was very important in aligning the airline fleet with Asiana Airlines. We know they fly this popular Airbus widebody. So a purchase of the 787 will continue developing the fleet. It's going to be very interesting to see this unfold. Make sure you're staying tuned. On to the last story, and this also covers a prospective new aircraft order, where Fly A Deal, a low-cost Saudi Arabian carrier, has said it is looking to add wide-body aircraft to its fleet with a new purchase. Once signed, likely sometime in the 2024 calendar year, the contract could include 10 to 20 aircraft. Like Cathay Pacific, which we know also to be studying a new aircraft purchase, Flyer Deal is seeking a more mid-sized wide-body. As delivery slots become scarce, more and more airlines are looking to lock down future aircraft purchases. While purchases being made so far in advance do have their associated risks, they are believed to be an important decision for a company to secure their long-term future. If airlines are unable to lock down commitments now, they risk being unable to acquire aircraft directly from manufacturers when they need them later down the line, as all the slots will be taken and they'll be waiting for potential miracles or aircraft cancellations. Ultimately, this will result in the customers being forced to look into the leasing markets, which while a very helpful alternative, is seeing extra stress and pressures as we're seeing more and more growth and aircraft manufacturers being unable to increase their production rates when they would like to. When speaking with Reuters, the airline's CEO Stephen Greenway highlighted the A330neo and the 787 unsurprisingly as the leading two options. Discussions though are ongoing about which direction they'll head. Fly a deal only actually operates Airbus aircraft with 35 units units listed as in service. This includes A320 and A330 family aircraft. The youngest fleet type is the A320neo. So if it did move in the direction of Boeing, it would be making a switch to look towards a mixed fleet. A new purchase does ultimately align with Saudi Arabia's goal of enhancing tourism and its aviation sector. Among many other initiatives, we're seeing airlines respond by purchasing new aircraft to meet the prospective demand. That is going to conclude today's aviation news recap, which, as promised, certainly brought a lot of focus on new aircraft arriving at airlines. It's going to be a very busy 2024 Farnborough Air Show, with the last two weeks really identifying several key orders that are in the works, alongside many other developments, as we see the industry not just recover, but move forward. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Again, if you have any thoughts, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It is greatly appreciated. Make sure you are staying tuned tomorrow where same place, same time, there'll be another aviation news recap. But if you're a regular viewer, you'll know that already. And we'll fly.